C'est bon maintenant, c'est bon. C'est bon C'est bon, très bien. So good evening, everyone. Uh, before starting, I would like to, to thank my math center, especially Professor Katit, for this uh, amazing event. So I am Anna Shabawi from Mohammed VI Polytechnic University, and we will continue with the second part of the presentation, how to conduct a systematic data review for scientific research projects. So first and foremost, research can be either primary or secondary. So for primary research, generally involves gathering data directly from research subjects, for example, interviews or field work, and they requires ethical approval. For secondary research involves gathering data that already exists. So because secondary research doesn't include generating new data, it doesn't need ethical approval. So in secondary research, we use finding of other researchers. When we talk about uh, scientific research, we talk about the process. For example, here we try to formulate our research question or topic, and then we do a literature review and we follow a research methodology. And from that, we proceed to the collection and analysis of data to get results. And we can then interpret and discuss these results. And so each time we produce a scientific article, we go through these steps, and this is the philosophy of literature review. So the literature review is one of many research methodologies that can be used to conduct the secondary research. It's the first phase of scientific research process. And as shown here, is done in three steps, data collection, within, and synthesize. In general, there are two types of literature review. Narrative literature review, which is kind of description of collected documents, and systematic literature review that follows a rigorous scientific process. So it takes more than a few steps to gather, combine, and evaluate existing documents. The advantage of the systematic literature review is that it is more organized and more justified than narrative literature review. So what are the fundamental steps to follow in order to conduct a systematic literature review? <clears throat> and before starting a systematic literature review, we need to make sure that we're asking questions in the right way. It's possible that our questions are too general. So many people have tried to answer our questions in so many ways that we will never gather all the available documents. Or maybe our questions are too specific and there is no research or not enough resources to answer our questions. That's why before starting a systematic literature review, we need to specify our research question. <clears throat> Once we have specified our research question, we can start our systematic literature review. The first step is to search for bibliographic references, of course, by using scientific databases to find published documents related to our topic. Once we have researched for references, we can move to the next step, which is the collection of the relevant references that we have found. And in this step, we can use references management tools. They are Zotero, which is easy and free. So the third step is a deep reading. And it's an important step that we need to take a careful look at what we have gathered to filter it. I mean to, to remove the documents that don't answer our questions and to preserve the ones that are relevant to our research and that will help us answer our question resources. The next step is the synthesize. So now we can go on and do some statistical analysis of these documents. In this step, we use statistical tools to analyze our data. We will also look at our studies to evaluate the quality of the research. And once everything is prepared, we will summarize results that, that addresses our questions. 
No, we are ready for the last step, which is the discussion. So once we've decided what the evidence has to say about our question, we turn our conclusions into a report that describes the steps followed and what we discovered, then share it with anyone who cares about the topic. So now we will go to every step in more details. And of course, the first step is identification. In this step, we have to identify keywords like we have in this table, we have a list of keywords used in the search and their combinations. We need to identify which databases we're going to search in, and that depends on the field and the research topic. So we need also to identify how many documents are extracted. So in this case, we have 182 documents that are identified by searching in different scientific databases. The next step is data collection and management using Zotio, which is a bibliographic references management tool. And as we can see here, the period of collected publication ranges from 2000 and 2021. The, uh, the oldest publication is in 2000, and the newest is the frequencies of each type of documents. For our study, the, the highest frequency is for this. So after screening our references, then what is the next step? We need to define what we call inclusion and exclusion criteria of the collected documents. So for my topic, I will define the set of my keywords, and these keywords are the first door, the first criteria that allows us to decide if you will take a reference into consideration or not. Also, I'm not going to search in any databases. I need to identify scientific databases that are related to my research topic, to my field of research. Another important criterion that we need to identify is scientific journals in which we are going to look for documents. So here you may understood that in the narrative literature review, we are not obli obliged to, to define all these details but in the systematic literature review, we need to follow a strict protocol, and from that, we need to define the criteria. I'm not going to work on the same database, but rather on several. And so that's what we call a systematic approach. I mean, I'm not going to take a package of documents and inject it in a statistical tool to do some calculations to have an idea about what other researchers have produced. So there is also what we call the indexation and the impact factor. So the indexation means that the journal is in an indexed database. If we search in the database, we will find this journal. And the impact factor is the quantitative factor that tells us about the popularity of a journal. These two parameters are very important. So we need to take them into account. consideration because they will argue our choice of criteria. So we will argue our choice of the chosen bibliographic references. So we go on to refine the criteria of inclusion. We can also include the language. For example, we can search for documents written whether in English or French. Here I speak about uh, people who work in social sciences or economics, etc. They will be sensitive to this parameter of language. So we, for example, in applied sciences, we use French and English a lot. So the French and English for us are the most important criteria in language. There is also another parameter, which is the research methodology. We can define which methodology we are going to zoom in. And why this is very interesting? Because what are we going to do as researchers? We are going to produce our own results we are not going to go through the same path as the other researchers. So what makes a research original is that the researcher learned from the previous studies and in methodology of research is very important. <clears throat> now we move to, 
to the exclusion criteria. And the first thing we need to do is to remove repeated documents. If we use two or more databases, we will have some duplicate documents. So in this case, I need to remove the duplicates. Also, we could find some documents that are written in other languages than French or English that I could also remove. We could remove some types of documents like technical reports or conference paper. And by doing some deep within, we could remove any relevant documents. So here's an example. So after removing the repeated documents and the documents that are written in languages other than French and English, we have 17 documents that are selected. And here I'm showing you some results of the systematic literature review study. The word uh, cloud, which is a representation of words that give greater prominence to words that appear more frequently. It gives us an idea about some new keywords that we could use in searching in scientific databases. And here's a diagram that shows the research areas covered in the reviewed papers, and also a table shows the exact frequencies of each subject area. So it shows how many studies are related to each field. Also we have here the distribution of journals published in the viewed papers with a table showing the exact number of studies for each journal. For example, here for the journal title, Geophysics, we have 5.3%. And here is our synthesized table. So in this table, the rows represent the authors and the columns represent the criteria. What are we trying to identify in a scientific article? The research issue, methodology, results, etc. These elements that are in the columns and in the rows, they are the previous studies. That's what we call the analysis grid, and this is the measure output. So to summarize, first of all, we look at planning. So, so we need to specify our research question and develop a protocol. After that, we go with our systematic review execution. We do research and select studies based on defined criteria. We, we also extract the data and we start to assess the quality of our papers. And then we start the synthesize. And finally, we come up to the review report or the systematic review report where we start to write a document that summarizes our findings and we can continuously update it. So these are the steps for doing systematic review. I am now going to wrap up with some lessons learned when it comes to systematic review. So systematic review is a detailed review of existing literature on a precise topic to address a specific question. It's not a literature review, it's a selection of high quality documents. And the protocol is necessary to define study design goals and outcomes. And this need to be, to be shared by the reviewers. Also, systematic reviews can be reported in, in your own way. <clears throat> Most systematic reviews are following a precise analysis approach where we just describe what we found in common or not, and also go statistical step, which is quantitative approach. Also, systematic reviews are very useful. You can learn a lot uh, when you start to look at the journal papers, for example. That, that did already a systematic review and you learn from them. So this will be a very interesting approach to make sure that you are following the best practices, especially if you do it for the first time. So that's it for the presentation. Uh, and uh, we will have the second part, the application, or, and see how to conduct a systematic literature review using InVivo. You will find here, the links to download those that we will work with, that's Zotero, which is a references management tool, and Invivo, which is qualitative data analysis.
and here some useful references to get 